All right, thanks for coming. Uh, this talk is about suing with chum in shark infested waters, uh, Grenoble 3 outreach in the modern age. Um, this talk is really about my experience uh, doing uh, outreach uh, for Grenoble. So, hope you guys uh, get, some, get some interesting uh, facts out of this. So, uh, first, let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Sri Ram Krishna. I'm currently employed with Intel Corporation. Uh, I've been part of the GNOME project since 1997. So, been I started around six months before after the project started. Uh, I started off doing uh, GNOME summaries, which is like um, uh, project summaries, like what happened, how many uh, statistics about who did what, and so forth. And that, that uh, merged into doing a GNOME journal, which, uh, which was sort of a, uh, a, well, basically a journal with articles and whatnot. And finally, I, I, I'm now working for the engagement team. I'm also uh, a, a director, I was elected director of the GNOME Foundation, which handles the non-coding parts of uh, GNOME. So uh, moving forward, that's who I am. So uh, the first thing is really to define what is outreach and how does it concern us. So I like to define that first just so that we're all on the same page. So for me, uh, outreach is really about the ability to communicate uh, the goals of our project, uh, address problem trends, and, communi uh, and communicate them to, to developers and so forth. Um, and also really to be a positive buffer between users and developers, right? So when people have problems or things like that, you need somebody who has really good interpersonal skills uh, to communicate both and, and deal, deal with things with, a, with, a sense of, with some sensitivity. So I really want to start off first with some historical perspective. Um, I do that because uh, there are some lessons to be learned when, when, we, uh, when, when we transition from GNOME 1, 1 1.x to GNOME 2.x, right? So when, when we started off GNOME 1.x, it just started, right? It's a new project, and the average age of your GNOME developer was probably 19 years old. We had at least one developer I know who was maybe 12, maybe even 10. So when you think about it, what do these guys know about software development? They were just starting out, and uh, they, were want, they wanted to do, so, do something interesting, right? They wanted to write a desktop. And they had all kinds of ideas, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and every feature was awesome. Basically showing off, right? It's testosterone. And we are going to show all the cool things that we can do uh, with a desktop. We have the code. We can do it. And of course, that led to a lot of funny features like swallowed apps. I don't know if anybody, does anybody remember swallowed apps? Where, oh, OK, your old one. A lot, a lot of those comes from uh, older window managers like FEWM, where you could swallow X clock and put it inside the dock. It was, it was one of the more ridiculous features we had in GNOME. <laughs> so, but you know what? All those features came at a cost. Um, that cost is really instability. When you have every feature you can, you are going to run into trouble. And you know, I, I've talked to a lot of people about that time frame. Uh, and to why we did what we did when we went to 2x. And we were actually in trouble. Because we, we were so undisciplined, we, we incurred the wrath of distros. They, I was told this, that they wanted to drop us because we were so unstable. Our platform was a moving target because we kept changing things. We kept playing around with the code, kept trying to do things. 
so nobody could write for the platform. So that was pretty broken. So when we transitioned to GNOME 2.0, um, it, it, it was more than just a, a, a transition from, uh, it was more than a transition of just a, a version number, right? Um, this was really about transitioning from uh, basically some young kids to people who who are learning how to actually do software development. And really it was about growing up, being mature. And so we had to worry about things like API stability. We had to worry about a lot of those things because if you didn't, nobody can trust the platform. So all this is, I'm trying to do, say all this, uh, I'm going back to this historical perspective to kind of say, kind of give you an understanding of why we are what we are um, and why we're sometimes very conservative, We're why we are so thoughtful about how we put something into the platform because of lessons learned from GNOME 1.x to 2.x. Because that was, that, was that was a hard transition because we, we base, every application developer had to rewrite their, their app. Um, one really good example was um, uh, there was a there was a financial app, so Canoe Cash. They it took them I think like five years to actually <laughs> finally convert from uh, 1.x to 2.x because they wrote so many uh, they, they wrote their own widgets and it took them forever. Uh, so we presented 2.x, and it was different than 1.x. And you know what that means. People hate change. And boy, did they hate it. <laughs> and because we took all those fun things, we took away swallowed apps. Oh, God. So uh, I, and it, it's really interesting, people's reactions. When, when, when something like this occurs because they really get um, irate because, again, it's, it's, it was, I, I, I don't know how to ex explain it. It, it. it was just they really wanted to play around with so many things, right? Lots of little things they want to play around with. But we didn't want to do that. We actually wanted to simplify things. We really decided on having a kind of just works mentality, right? We want to have same defaults. We want to have our software work for 99% of the people without having to mess with it. So we actually had one other thing. We actually wanted to have our software to be usable by anybody regardless of physical ability. So. I mean, we started the, the accessibility toolkit just because of that. So when, when we went through, and we, uh, from GNOME 2.0 to 2.12 was, was actually the best part of the GNOME project. That was, that was the best because that was when we started getting the, the the user land tools, right? We had how we had the, the abstraction layers. We were able to finally put a DVD or CD-ROM into a computer and have it automatically mounted. Wow. So, but we evolved, right? We evolved the desktop. And what came out as a final product was something everybody really loved. So. It, we can change things and still come up with something really good at the end. But during that entire time, we, um, during that entire time, we, uh, we, it, was, it was funny because we were removing things left, right, and center. But when we did it, we never, 
we've never we never did any outreach. So people really complain brutally. Well, I mean, it's like common wisdom that when GNU removes features, like, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, because everybody remembers this, this part. This is the part they remember. That's where that, that's where that whole thing came from, was this part. But outreach. What did we know? We were what, 22, 23? And we were hackers. We don't. We never did all those things. We don't interact with people. What, why would we do that? We we were into our code, so we never we never really did outreach. It's it was part because doing outreach actually requires some maturity, right? And we didn't do that. And because we didn't do that, we had a lot of people with latent hostility. So when we remove things, we didn't provide any context as to why we did it. We didn't add to explain why we were making the changes. And most importantly, we allowed others to write our story. That's where common wisdom comes about. Because we didn't write our story. We let other people write everything for us. While we sat around in our IRC channels and looked at things and shook our heads and whatever. We didn't have anybody engaging. If there was a slash dot thread or something. We didn't we didn't do anything. So we had we had so we let people write write our story. And so those things became became uh, I guess common wisdom. Could we have done better? Sure, we could have. Um, but you have to gain wisdom before you could have done better. I don't think uh, we had that. And being so young and understood, and we didn't. It's unheard of. I mean, it was free software. We didn't. We didn't really do. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't remember any 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 project at the time doing any outreach or. Do any kind of that kind of formalism. So we didn't engage our critics. Then came GNOME 3. Now, um, I don't know about others, but I knew what was going to come. <laughs> we, we saw this, I saw this story before, and um, it was great. I am. A lot of us were involved in that release. We did. It was arguably our best release. We had we we were on. We had we had brochures. We had videos. We had short little videos on YouTube. We had all kinds of cool stuff. Um, we really plan. We did. We did a really good job of planning this. So when it was released, initial reactions were not so spectacular. Oops, I missed the slide. You can't miss the cat. So, the unholy mess that is going on three. That was Linus's quote there. I, when I think of Linus, I always think of this cat because that's <laughs> really <laughs> it. Really does kind of encapsulate the the reaction. Um, and it was really funny because LWN had the largest common thread. They ever had <laughs> was the what was it the uh, was grumpy something grumpy editors uh, review of GNOME three I think is what it was and it was it was it was hilarious well it was hilarious and also sad at the same time but um, okay so why did they hit it well we completely changed how we interacted I mean GNOME two GNOME three they're like completely different how we, how we interact with it. So we changed, changed how we interact with the desktop. We made no bridge from the old to the new. And because of all, all that outrage, a lot of people decided, well, maybe I have to learn something new. I might as well try to look at somewhere else, right? We had a problem with messaging. So...
So we had a problem. We had a problem. News travels. Bad news and ugly news travel even faster. This is the day, this is the age of Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and a bunch of other stuff. So the outreach is required for damage control and communication. Because if you didn't do damage control, it'll just get, it'll get, it'll just get worse. And you'll just have, everyone will just get, completely have this negative um, view of the project. So again, it comes back to this. We cannot allow others to write the story. Never allow anybody to write your story. So, so it's really important to engage your critics. When we engage, we're communicating our intent, our goals, and most importantly, our passion. When you challenge your critics, they will see ground to you. It's happened many times. I don't let anybody speak badly without at least asking them why they feel that way. Because when you do, they will change their mind. They will. But don't do this. That's the worst thing you can do. When we first started off, that's exactly what we kind of did. Because when you get that much hate, you really want to stick your head in the sand. Mm -hmm. It is a natural thing. We, when we, when we released Code 3, we were hiding out in IRC. <laughs> it, was our, it, was our, it was our peace place, right? It was where we, uh, but we had, to, we had to crawl out of there. Um, we had to crawl out of there. And especially when you had all these people like Linus Torvalds and other high, high ranking people. I mean, it was, and you, we had reviews from the Linux action, action uh, show. It was, it was nuts. So how did we, how did we start this? This actually says, GNOME 3.0 engagement, pounding sand with an anvil. Fortunately, you can read all of that. Um, it was a slow start, really slow. Uh, we had no apparatus to engage the community. Nothing. How do you how do you start a conversation? Um, nobody was helping out, pointing out why we were doing the designs. What was the reason behind them? Nobody was out there doing that. Um, Nobody was engaging people with misconceptions. Oh, it's a mobile OS. Oh, this looks like it's something that's great to put on my phone. It's all wrong. Um, and and our, we had, and also we we weren't really sharing proper documentation. Where where can they go to find out themselves? So so we need to pull together our communication channels. So we did, we did a couple things. Uh, we created a Facebook page. We uh, had a Twitter account. Uh, we had a Google Plus. We created some communities on there. We had a, a, a GNOME account as well. And we took control of the GNOME namespace on Freenet. So nobody else could create GNOME sucks or something like that. Right, um, uh, we monitored the pound gnome hashtag, make sure, see what people are saying about us. We, um, well, I personally do this because I'm so sort of narcissistic. Um, I used to search for gnome on Google Plus, and I used to <laughs> break <pregnant us. laughs> um, and and I would I would actually start fights. <laughs> Because, <laughs> I, like I said, I wasn't going to allow anybody to write this story, right? I wasn't going to do it. And uh, I used to go on Reddit, 
There was no place I wasn't. I wasn't there. Uh, we did some other things. We, we redesigned our wiki, made sure people can do that. Um, we, we had blog posts. Uh, Alan Day would, 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 would show up with nice blog posts about the latest designs and things like that. Um, Matthias also, Klausen also did some stuff. You can see on Planet Gnome. So we're, we're getting our information out there. We sometimes still get the same thing. Oh, Gnome was features. It's almost, I don't know, it's still reflexive. But you can see, right, from, from that Gnome 2, why, why, why is that so reflexive? I can understand it. When your engagement is sort of interesting, there are all kinds of people uh, who are upset for a number of reasons. Um, I, I happen to be on the plane with uh, Keith Packard. And um, he was on the plane. And 10 minutes after he sits down, he started going off on Gnome. He loves to do that. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, is that Gnome 2 was perfect for him. It was, he really loved the window manager. It was fully compliant. Uh, it's back, he, he loved it. And when we transitioned to Gnome Shell, uh, he lost uh, something. For him, it was an emotional response because it was completely what he wanted, and now it's not. And it almost felt like a betrayal because he was so involved in that project. So, and same thing with Eric Hanholt, they were really involved. And that sudden loss, it's so emotional. And, you know, he was actually told, oh, well, this project's not for you. All right, if you think about that, that wasn't a really good thing to say. So when you're engaging, it's really important to be sensitive. Acknowledgement is actually the number, one of the best things you can do when somebody complains is I acknowledge that I acknowledge the problem. I can't we can't always fix it. You know, if he says JavaScript sucks, we've already on, we're already on that path. We're not gonna change it. So it's always about negotiation. Well if we if we did this, would that be okay? If they change goalposts, I don't know, you know. But it's always continuing to have um, a dialogue. And it's actually be better when they're angry, because at least they care. If they're met with nothing, then, you know, where do you go from there? So, going, you have to, so engagement can be challenging, um, but it can be done, and it does, it does change minds. And GNOME is controversial. We do things that other desktops don't. We, we push things. We put pressure on the ecosystem. And that's a good thing. Because somebody has to do it. So I, I was saying engagement can be, can be good. So we could have Sometimes a, 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 a intense conversation can lead to beer. That's always great. But uh, there's been a lot of these where conversations like this could turn into a net positive. So actually, with all that, enthusiasm is up. Now, that may not be because of engagement. It could be that People have gotten used to it, and they're able to adapt to it. So, in fact, we had two guys, and I was talking about the action Linux Action Show guys. They both love the, but they both love GNOME now. After that horrific review they had earlier, uh, it was a startling contrast. 
<laughs> so is our job done? Job is never done. It's always a continual dialogue. Um, so we're not done by a long shot. We have to keep monitoring. We have to um, make sure that when we have things like transparency is removed from GNOME Terminal, that <laughs> we know how to engage. <laughs> we know how to, and, and uh, there's not a five alarm fire <laughs> that we have to go. So these things happen, and you have to go and address it. Actually, all I have, so I can take some questions. Thank you. Repeat the question. I didn't, I didn't ask any. Who, who has? How do you think GNOME 4 will be received? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping GNOME 4 doesn't. Uh, we're, we're not even close to GNOME 4 yet. So uh, ho hopefully it won't be uh, anything. I think we're done making huge, huge changes like that. So. If it is, you can blame. We can blame other people. You don't have to blame me. <laughs> now, other questions? Yes? Um, so, a question about how you. This is a big part of kind of marketing. How do you actually go out into a community like ours and not seem to be marketing what you're doing? It's okay that you are, but how do you, how do you kind of. What boundaries do you Well, yourself? it's. <sighs> So we, call, we, we actually started off calling ourselves the marketing team. And we're not really selling you anything in, in the sense, right? Marketing is really about selling you something. That's why we changed it to engagement, because I'm really engaging all of you. I'm trying to, or we're, we're trying to um, engage and, and, and because we want to have a conversation. So I'm not... I'm, Marketing is really a one-way thing, right? Right. So I, I don't, I don't, I'm not. I, 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 does it seem to you that it, it's marketing? I was wondering whether you had any kind of personal guidelines so that you didn't step over the boundary into marketing. So oh. Um. Customer service, customer support. Yeah, and I do that because by asking questions. I don't because it's really about. When somebody, I, I mean, when I'm, I'm talking to somebody, I'm really, it's because they're either saying something good or something bad. They're saying something bad, and I go, why, well, what is it that you dislike? Or I'm not, that, that way I'm not stepping over the line. I'm not saying, well, we do, we do this and this and this and this, you know, you should try. We, we're not, it's, it's more passive. I'm not, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, we do we do announcements of certain things like hey we have this new design care to comment you know those kind of things so hopefully I've answered your question you look doubtful no, no, no. <laughs> no, I, I think I think what I took from your answer is that you're probably trying to learn about what pe why people are saying what they're saying yes okay. I'm really trying to get inside their head okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, um, you mean like sharing of technologies? Oh, where I'm done. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, looks like. Thank you.